So the San Diego County Board of Supervisors held a public hearing this week on what some call a controversial topic regarding the definition of a woman. Agenda item 34, well that's an ordinance that would implement the UN Convention of Eliminating of all forms of discrimination against women. Now, under this ordinance, San Diego County's historical definition of women has now changed to include biological men. We've got immigration attorney Esther Valdez Clayton, who is at the meeting and voiced her objections. Here you go. Good afternoon, Board of Supervisors. My name is Esther Valdez Clayton. I am a resident of District 3, where Tara Lawson Reamer is now my supervisor. And I'm a longtime resident of Coronado, where I serve as the president of the Coronado Unified School District. Professionally, though, I've had the privilege and the honor of representing immigrant women for over 20 years in seven states, in federal courts, and around the world. I'm frequently interviewed in BBC, Telemundo, Tele Televisa, in Mexico, and just recently in Japan as well, for my work and advocacy for women and girls. Women and girls are biologically noted and gifted by God to be exactly what you see in front of you. For the past two years, we've heard from Nathan Fletcher tell us to trust the science. Well, I ask Mr. Fletcher, trust your eyes, trust your science, trust your heart. Because when you see a woman, you know deep inside what a woman looks like. It looks like me. It looks like a vulnerable woman who has the equal power to be an intellectual peer to any of you here but also the weakness and the vulnerability to care for the lost and the marginalized. I'm also a Latina just like you, Ms. Nora Vargas. I was also raised in part in Tijuana. And I wanna ask you, how much did they pay you to sell out our culture, our values, our language? Because I know most of the proponents here are white women. Three of you are men. None of you know what it's like to be a woman. None of you know the vulnerability that my clients feel when they are detained, escaping sexual abuse from Mexico, and then being placed in a, pla in a detention center or a facility with the same gender that abused them, or escaping their abuser, running to a homeless shelter or a domestic violence shelter, and then being placed with a man, because no amount of lipstick or a dress is gonna make a man look like me. These hips don't like, like Shakira said. Next speaker, please. I'll stop. Well, there you have it. So the vote passed three to two. And with me now to talk more about that very passionate speech and the vote is Esther herself. Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure, Jenny. Um, okay, so I know we kind of set the scene, but please tell us more about this, this vote and why it sparked such passion, such fury in you. Well, there's law, policy, and politics, right? Under the law in the state of California and under federal law, transgender persons, be they male or female, regardless of their identity, deserve dignity and respect, and they have those protections. Under the law that is now being proposed, this new ordinance, the San Diego County Board of Directors is trying to impl implement a policy from the United Nations. It's meant to eliminate all forms of discrimination for women and girls in politics and economics and properly so. We know factually that women have less opportunities. Economically, they have higher poverty rates, is sometimes more domestic violence in certain counties as well, and certainly more in more ethnicities. So that part is particularly perfect. What is at contention is the definition of who is a woman. They want to include transgender men, which are biologically men, they were born men. They have the strength of a male, greater bone density, height, a larger, um, larger lung capacity, larger hearts to dominate in sports. That's why we have different sports, different locker rooms, different domestic violence shelters, because for women, 98% of women are aggrieved by males, biological males. What this ordinance would allow them to do is to be able to be housed, be able to sleep and change in girls' locker rooms, in domestic violence shelters, in detention centers as well, and to be able to compete in women's sports. So when we talk about the law, the law already has protections for transgender persons. This is already just sheer politics. At the Board of Supervisors meeting, there was overwhelmingly approximately 400 comments, over 100 people there that were opposing this ordinance from being passed. These were people from all walks of life. There was a gay man who was stating that he opposed it, particularly because he didn't want his community as a gay man to have to be affirm a transgender woman 
as a man. He was attracted to men. That's what he came there to say. Don't change and define who I am. And ultimately what this is, is by fiat, which means by just outside of a regulatory legal process, the Board of Supervisors is redefining what biologically, scientifically, and sociologically we know are differences between a male and a female. And I took ex exception to this as an immigration attorney because for the five hours prior to this uh, debate, they were going on and on, all supervisors, particularly Fletcher, Vargas, and Lawson Reamer, were applauding themselves for their work and contributions to the immigrant, the immigrant community here. They were preparing for Title 42 to be rescinded. They were allowing for migrant shelter spaces. They were uh, talking about diversity, the Office of Equity. And then all, the only five proponents that were there happened to be Caucasian, also citing that of uh, their work for immigrants and that this was about equity and diversity. And that's why I spoke up because under, with Latino culture, and I happen to be Latina, but uh, during this time I've heard from all cultures, including Muslim women, Indian women, uh, women who are Caucasian as well, wives, mothers, fathers, Latino men. They were taking exception because most cultures that, um, that come to this country tend to skew more conservative. We're deeply more religious. We have more values. For a young girl to undress in front of a man, a male, it's shameful. That's reserved for marriage. If you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, that's something for your wedding bed. And now for the Board of Supervisors to dominate this conversation and go above your beliefs, your culture, your values, that's really a political move. And that's what I was calling them out because it was sheer political pressure that they were under and they didn't want to listen to the San Diego constituents that we were all congregated there and will be back on May 10th. One could argue that, I mean, you're saying that these women, you know, in, in shelters, if they were abused by a man, that's almost reliving that sort of trauma. But I mean, the abuse can go both ways. It's, it's such a controversial and hard topic. It shouldn't be controversial because we have facts, just like I told you. 98% of domestic violence uh, um, w are women, and they suffer at the hands of males. So they're not trying to overpower another woman, which would be an equal match between you and I. They are being aggrieved and dragged and pulled by the hair, and I represent these women. For 20 years, I've taken down their declarations. I've fought for them in federal court, and like I said, in seven states. I've taken their declarations. I know the level of abuse, particularly for migrant women, which the United Nations says 37% have suffered sexual abuse at the hands of male. For example, Mexico has the highest femicide rate in all of the world. Femicide means that they kill you simply for being a woman. The highest amount of disappearances happen along the border. Over 3,000 disappeared women. They are mu found mutilated, beheaded, and raped at the hands of males. They then come to the United States. Sometimes they, uh, they tr uh, migrate with their aggressor who happens to be their partner or their husband. They run to a domestic violence shelter. When you're there, you wanna heal. You wanna be in a safe space as a woman where you're respected and your dignity is appreciated. And I want that also for transsexual people, a safe space for them too. And that's certainly an option that the Board of Supervisors can also present. They could say, why don't we present a third option where they also are not being bullied, discriminated and harassed by their male peers for dressing as a woman, but we want that too. It's like we're reliving the women's rights movement from the 60s to have to fight for the scholarships, the opportunities, the women's sports. We saw Leah, um, the, uh, the swimmer, that is now dominating the NCAA swimming championships as well. Just yesterday, 60 U.S. senators also presented legislation to be able to protect women. And it's not just that we cannot compete on an intellectual level. It's certain areas, just like we see in the Olympics, they're separated by gender precisely because men are different than women, biologically, down to our DNA, down to the lung capacity. But certainly we won't be outmatched intellectually, and that's what we're going to be there to prove. Esther, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure this is not the last that we will uh, be hearing from you on this topic and just this topic in general. Thank you. Thank you so much.